Okay, guys. <clears throat> um, I want to start with this, and then we'll get to homework in a minute here if we get to it. But the uh, first thing. I want to remind you guys of problem types that you know how to solve before we get to ones that are completely, completely new. This is one you guys know how to solve. And I'm not going to try to present to you and say that you have to solve it through any other way. But I do want to show you another way to solve it because we're going to use that way on other problems that are much more complicated. The way we're going to do is kind of a set it equal to zero and factor. And just kind of walk with me through this um, before we get to a real problem that really requires it. If I put that less than or equal to zero, what could you take out of that? What would be the best greatest common factor to take out? Yeah, four. yeah negative four. Negative four gives you a nice leading positive. So if I pull a negative four out, we know that we factor the negative out and I get a positive. You get an x plus three. Now, just kind of go with me on this, and we'll walk through it again when we get to problems that really do require it. Because you're going to look at me and say, why didn't we just divide both sides by negative 4 at the start and flip the sign? And yeah, that's what you would do. It's faster. But <clears throat> right here, I want to look at this and determine something that is very known in math called critical values, values that make any factor become 0. Critical values, which we call CVs, or I'll just kind of put critical values, are values that make any factor equal to zero. Okay, for some reason I like had a brain moment and I wanted to make sure I was recording, and I am. So critical values, values that make any factor equal to zero. You can go minimize now. Values that make any factor equal to zero. So what would the critical value here be? There's only one of them. What's the, fact, what's the value of the variable that would make a factor equal zero? Huh? So we say a critical value of negative three. The next step is we're going to plot that critical value on a number line. Just put it dead smack center. And then ask yourself if negative three could be a solution itself. Before you worry about inequality, is negative three actually going to satisfy the original inequality? Yes or no? Yeah, it's a less than or equal to. If I plug negative 3 in, I get 12 is less than or equal to 12, which certainly works. So we're going to put a closed circle on negative 3. Then we're going to do what I've coined as a SIGIN test. I call it a SIGIN test because if I mispronounce the word SIGIN, my juniors don't confuse the word sign with the word sign, S-I-N-E. It's a thing. So it's really called a sign test, and Mrs. Manton's going to wonder what the heck you mean when you say a SIGIN test. Uh, but it's a sign test. Sign is in positive negative. I'm doing a sign test on any number in either of the regions. Any number bigger than negative 3. Let's think of a number greater than negative 3. Negative 2. Many of you will want to use a different number that might even be easier to use than negative 2. 0. If we're going to do 0, just get in the habit of picking the quickest numbers. Uh, I'm going to plug 0. Take 0. And I'm going to plug it... <coughs> I'm going to plug it into the factored inequality. The factored inequality is the thing I just highlighted up above. That's the one we're going to plug it into. When I plug it into negative 4, I get a negative 4. And when I plug 0 into x plus 3, I get a 3. But that's not the sign test. Oops. 0 plus 3, I should say. The sign test is only concerned with signs. The negative of the negative 4 times the positive of the 0 plus 3. Because what's a negative times a positive? Negative. negative. Which means that every single number greater than negative 3 will actually give you a negative number when plugged in. And negative numbers are less than 0. Which means that every number in this region will satisfy the sign test and will satisfy the inequality. I must also test the number in the other region. I'm going to test negative 4. You can test negative 7,000 if you'd like. When I plug negative 4 into negative 4, it still is negative 4 because negative 4 is a constant. I get a negative. But when I plug in negative 4 into x plus 3, do I get a negative or a positive? Negative 4 into x plus 3. Negative 4 plus 3. Negative. But a negative times a negative. 
will give me a positive. The negative of the negative 4 and the negative of the negative 1 will give me a positive. Positive numbers do not satisfy that less than or equal to 0. So we leave that unshaded, and my solution would be all x such that x is greater than or equal to negative 3. That's the long way. It's not the way you'd want to do it with a linear inequality, but it is the way you're going to want to do it with any power greater than 1. So let's practice this now and walk through this more formally. So I'm going to do this with an example. x squared minus 1 is greater than x plus 5. Step 1. Set the inequality to zero. Or I like to say set in equal to zero. It's kind of better than saying set equal to zero because it's not an inequality, it's an inequality, so set in equal. So just like get zero on one side, which means x squared minus x minus six. I think it's kind of implied that we should do descending order, but if you need to write that, do it. Step two, what am I going to say? Yeah. So you get an x minus 3 and an x plus 2. Do you remember what the next step was? Same thing right up above. Before that, sign test is step five, critical values. Critical values. So we're going to put CVs of, and there are two of them. Yeah, doesn't matter if they're in numerical order. Step four, graph the CVs as closed or open circles. You have to determine if the CVs are closed or if they are open. Are these closed or open? Why? Be loud for once. Because the sign isn't greater than or equal to. Yeah. These are pretty sensitive, but they're not that sensitive. I know, because if I'm ever doing chores or something at home when talking on the phone, someone on the other end can hear everything I'm doing, like every little thing I'm doing. Okay. Next, uh, what? Step five is the sign test. So let's break down the sign test into smaller pieces. Step A. Oh, I forgot to put the open circles. My bad. Oh, there. Step A of the sign test. Uh, pick a number in a region. So I like to pick the region that's biggest to start with. Pick a number greater than three. Any number. Okay, five. I would have gone with 80,000, but you can go with five. Okay, next, uh, test it. So step B is to plug it into each factor, but only be concerned with the sign, sign only. Now, the factored form is this one right here. That's the form we're going to plug it into the one that has just a list of factors greater than zero. So when I plug it in, I plug it into 5 minus 3, that gives me a positive. I plug it into 5 plus 2, and that gives me a positive. And then step C of the sign test is to determine the net sign. That just means what is a, t a positive times a positive. I think you guys know that one. It circle it as a positive. And then we're going to repeat this with the other three regions. So pick a number between negative 2 and 3. Zero. Cool. Plug 0 in to x minus 3. 
you get a negative. Plug 0 into x plus 2, you get a positive. A negative times a positive is, so we circle the negative, and then we keep going. Plug in any number less than negative 2. <laughs> negative what? Negative 5. I thought you were going to do something clever. But then you realize you're being recorded. I don't think it was that sensitive. <laughs> Phrasing on the number choice. So we get negative 4. Um, let's plug it in. Um, negative 4 minus 3 is a negative. Negative 4 plus 2 is a negative. Negative times a negative. Step 6. Shade the regions that pass the test. Well, we have to determine what it means to pass the test. What does the inequality say passes the test? Go back up to the pink highlighted region. Which regions am I looking for, the positives or the negatives? Positives. It says greater than zero. I'm looking for positives. So my regions that pass the test are the regions that were positive. The regions that failed the test are the regions that were negative. So we'll shade those regions that were positive. And finally, step seven, and the final step, what do you think I'm going to say here? Yeah, take what you just did and now convert it back to set notation. All x such that x is less than negative four or two, sorry, or x is greater than three. Okay. Next. Step one, set n equal to zero. That's done. Step two, factor. That's not completely done. It's partially factored. It's not completely factored. Completely factored means identifying that the x squared minus one can factor more. How does that factor? Yeah, y squared. Both of them are repeated. And then you also have this right here as an x plus 2 and an x plus 1. Now, before you continue, let's, let's consolidate that even a little bit more. You have an x plus 1 squared times another x plus 1. So how many total x plus 1s do we have? 3. Uh, so we got x plus 1 cubed x minus 1 squared, and x plus 2. That is a simplified factored form. Every factor is represented, but you just have the powers representing what they are. <clears throat> okay, next, critical values. Identify them. There should be three. Yep. Graph them on a number line. Put down whether they are open or closed circles. In these, it's a less than or equal to. They are closed. Pick a number in any of these uh, four regions. I'm going to start from the right and move my way right to left. Um, so a number greater than one. I'm also going to highlight that factored form so we can look back at it. And you're going to plug 9 in. Now, you're going to plug 9 in, and you're going to keep the exponents a positive cubed 
a positive squared and then a positive. Uh, we'll keep track of everything. Well, that's just a lot of positives, so that's a plus. And then in between negative 1 and 1, you're going to plug in your next one. Pick a number. 0 plus 1 cubed is a positive cubed. We then have a negative squared and a positive. What's a positive cubed times a negative squared times a positive? positive? Positive. I'll give you a little trick I didn't give period one when doing this. When looking at this, first assume that it's positive and then look at where the negatives are. You really only have to look at the negatives. Positives don't do anything. So if there are negatives, to see what the negative interaction is. A negative squared is going to be a positive, and that whole thing's a positive. Next, we got to pick a number in between negative 2 and negative 1. Pick one. Negative 1 and a half, negative 1.5. That's the best we can do. Plug it in. It's not that hard to do. I mean, you plug it into negative 1 plus 1, or negative 1 and a half plus 1. It's going to be a negative cubed, then a negative squared, and then a positive. So I told you guys, you really only have to look at the negatives. What's a negative cubed? Negative. Negative squared? So the whole thing is negative. And then finally, left of negative 2, we can just do negative 3 or negative 80 million. Um, and I get negative cubed times a negative squared times a negative. You should see that every time you cross over one of these numbers, one more of these becomes negative. And so finally you're left with all of them as negative. And that will change if you have a leading negative that's just sitting out there. But um, in the end, a negative cubed times a negative squared times a negative is really a negative times a negative. It should be a positive. Okay. Next, do positives or negatives pass the test? Yeah, we're looking at a less than or equal to zero. So since that's a less than or equal to zero, I only want to shade the region that had a negative. I probably, probably should have shaded in the same color that I highlighted in, or that I put the, put the dots in, because your final set notation, all x such that negative 2 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 1. Do you see it? Before I put the close, is there any other place where there was a solution? Uh -huh. I have to say or x equals 1. We can't skip that closed circle right here. That was also a solution. This region, but then that right there. Because that's why we put the closed circle there. So you could see that that's a place that's, that works. OK, let's get more clever. x minus 3 over x plus 1 squared less than or equal to 0. Already factored, set equal to 0. I just need to go with critical values. What would they be? Negative 1 and 3. three. Anything that makes any factor equal to 0, regardless of if it's numerator or denominator. Okay, we'll plot these. Open or closed circles? I agree that there's a closed circle on 3. Yeah. Again, loud microphone. Yeah, even though it's a less than or equal to, negative 1 comes from a factor that came from the denominator. You cannot divide by 0, not even in this lifetime. So we need to make sure that that's an open circle. And that's going to be the one case where you might have one that's open and one that's closed, representing a numerator denominator. If this was a less than and not a less than or equal to, it would all be open circles. But if, since this is closed, we can count values in the numerator. We can't count values in the denominator. 
still get regions that we are separating. We just need to be careful how they're separated. Okay, let's plug in. Uh, number greater than three. I heard five first, but you can do four. Doesn't matter. Um, we get a positive divided by a positive squared. Doesn't matter whether it's multiplication or division. A positive divided by a positive is a positive. Then negative 1 to 3. I get a negative divided by a positive squared. And then let's do negative 50 just to be different. I get a negative over a negative squared. And that's the only one of these that's a negative. Regions that pass the test, are they positive or negative? negative? Negative. We look at the less than zero. This is one of the most common questions that we get when you guys start doing homework is, wait a minute, how do we know which regions to shade? And you want to take this right here and check that it's matching the less than or equal to zero right here. You're looking at that to determine this means shade negative regions. Okay, so we're going to shade that region. Ooh, this was a negative here in the middle, wasn't it? Way to like totally not tell me. That should have been a negative. We'll put it in a fixing color. A negative divided by a positive, still a negative. So that means this gets shaded as well. two ways to describe the set notation of this. You can say all x such that x is less than negative 1 or negative 1 is less than x which is less than or equal to 3. That is perfectly okay. It's splitting it up into two pieces. Or you can say all x such that x is less than or equal to 3 but you need to put a comma and put a little restriction on it. X what am I going to say here? Jack? X can't equal negative 1. Right. Now we're okay. Either way we did it, it's a proper set notation. Okay, slight change of gears and slightly easier problems to finish this out. Those are all that we, inequalities. Quite, we're called quadratic inequalities, but they really can be more than quadratics. Um, this is just a little reminder of clearing fractions. This is going to act as a little bit of a review, um, but kind of lead into stuff we're going to do when you guys get back from break. We've been adding and subtracting. Anytime we add, we've been keeping the denominators because we've been working with expressions, things without equal signs. This has equals or inequalities, so I can multiply both sides by a least common denominator. Well, what would I multiply both sides by here? State it. Let's state the LCD is 30. Multiply both sides. We get 6x minus 10 times x plus 2 plus 5 greater than or equal to 0. Or 6x minus 10x minus 20 plus 5 is greater than or equal to 0. Negative 4x is greater than or equal to 15. And since it's linear, I don't need to do any of this quadratic stuff. I can just divide both sides by negative 4. And I get negative 15 fourths. LCD. <clears throat> Multiply both sides by 12. We get 6x times x minus 1 plus 4 equals 3x times 2 minus x. Or 6x squared minus 6x plus 4 equals 6x minus 3x squared. 
or 9x squared minus 12x plus 4 equals 0. We know that factors into 3x minus 2 squared equals 0. That solution, that one right there, is what? What do we say? It's okay. You tried. You got it. What if I were to say, what if I were to say this? So what happens when I put it as a greater than or equal to? I need you guys to see the difference now. When you see that, you now need to say that the critical value is two-thirds. We're not going to be so concerned with the double roots, but I'm going to plot that, and I'm going to test regions. I'm going to test regions that work. I'm going to test numbers to the right and to the left. If I test, well, I don't know, one, I get a positive is greater than zero. If I test zero, I also get a negative squared, which is a positive, and the whole thing ends up working. And then you look at that and you realize that, yeah, actually anything squared is going to be greater than or equal to zero, and the solution there would be all real numbers. If I had 3x minus 2 squared is less than or equal to zero, and I tested the same number line, the same thing we just did here, and there are no regions that are negative, what would the solution there be? Yeah, just two-thirds. And it wouldn't be so concerning if you said it was a double root or not. It's, that's less important than it just satisfies the inequality. So just, there's a difference between all three of those. The second you go inequality with, a, with anything with a square, you've got to go sign graph, and you have to look at a sign test. Okay, we're done with this.